Welcome back to part three of our electron configuration lessons for unit 1.4. We are going to be hitting the home stretch, guys, so we're just gonna be clearing up some final things and I'm gonna show you a shortcut to write some big elements electron configurations and then we're gonna give you a bunch of practice. So hopefully you are getting the hang of things and we will be able to clear up any problems that you have. All right, so here's the deal. Start off today, I want you to write the electron configuration for manganese, which is MN, all right? So pause your video for a second, write your electron configuration, and then we'll see how it goes. Okay, so find manganese here, it's number 25. Notice that these electron configurations are getting kind of longer every time, so that's fun. Um, we're gonna start here, if we locate MN, it's in the fourth period, so we've got to go quite a ways starting with our 1s shell. So our electron configuration is going to be 1s2, 2s2. Hopefully you're kind of getting the hang of this, so I'm going to get going a little faster. 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, so that's me going through this shell here. And then the next one makes sense, it's 4s2. And if we refer back to our periodic table that we kind of filled in where we labeled things with the D block and that stuff, the next thing that would come you would think would be this D block shell here. And you're correct, but it is not called the 4D shell. It's actually called the 3D shell. So on this periodic table, and all periodic tables in fact, the D shells are one energy level behind. So we go 4s and then it's 3d and then over here past the 3d shell is our 4p shell. Okay so when we talk about our d shells the d shells even though they have a number three by them show up in the fourth energy level and i will go over that with you in just a second why but i want to finish filling this out with you so this is going to be the 5s shell then the 4d block 5p 6s 5d 6p 7s 6d and 7p now to, you say to yourself s and p's always match up with the period number d's are one behind and i told you about the f block kind of down here at the bottom we are going to ignore that but technically the f block belongs wedged in this space in the periodic table where this asterisk is and on your periodic table i think there's like an empty spot there as well this row belongs up here. And the reason they take the F block out is because honestly, it would just make your periodic table like twice the width, so they don't have it in there. But this is actually the 4F block. So this F block is actually part of the fourth energy level or fourth electron shell, um, but it comes way out of order from what you'd expect. And the 5F is the shell below it. So if we go back to our periodic table, and I've got this one, you wrote on yours probably, it looks like this. When we go back to the electron configuration for manganese, we go 4s2, and then this block right here is not the 4d, it's the 3d block. So my electron configuration is going to be 3d, and then if I count boxes, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So my electron configuration is going to end in 3d5. Okay, so when you write your electron configurations, just make sure that you remember that the D shells have one number smaller than the period that they are in. They're kind of one off cycle with that. Now, the reason for that is because of the way that things actually set up in your electron shells. So if you think about this area down here as, they have it labeled as energy on this graph, but essentially this is proximity to the nucleus or how close it is to the nucleus. So the 1s shell is very much the closest, then the 2s shell is quite a bit further out, and then it's the 2p. And if you remember kind of looking at our PES diagrams, these shells here were pretty close to each other, okay? So then next comes the 3p shell in terms of its closeness, or I'm sorry, 3s, then it's 3p, and then this is where things get kind of funky. 
once we get into the third and fourth energy levels, some overlap happens between the S and D shells of the third and fourth energy levels. And so what ends up happening is that the fourth energy level, the 4S shell, actually gets filled up first because the 4S shell requires less energy to put the electrons in than the D shell does. So the electrons go to the 4S, then they go to the 3D, and then they go to the 4P, and then it kind of follows the order of a periodic table. This order is called the off-bow order, and it explains why electrons go into the order they do, and it's because it's the easiest place to put them. So it's easier to put the electrons in the 4S than it is to put them in the 3D. And in reality, the 3D and the 4S are very close to each other in energy, so there is kind of some weird intermingling that happens with them, but that's not something that you have to worry about unless you take AP Chem. All right, so one more example I would like you to try, and then I'm gonna show you a shortcut. The next example is yttrium, Y. It's element number 39. So pause your video and then give yttrium a try for its electron configuration. Okay, so yttrium, element 39 here, is in the fifth period and it's in the D shell, and the D shell's first box, so this is gonna end in 4D1. So my electron configuration needs to include everything up to 4D1. So it's gonna be 1S2, 2S2, 2P6, 3S2, 3P6, 4s2 we're gonna go all the way through this d block so if we count the boxes it's one two three four five six seven eight nine ten boxes so that's three d ten through the four p that's four p six through the five s that's 5s2, and then yttrium here is 4d1. And you say to yourself, Mrs. Adimeyer, this is getting ridiculous. These electron configurations are getting massive. And you are correct. There are huge electron configurations, especially when you get down to like these elements down here, and things get insanely large. And so what they've done is they've actually developed a shortcut for how to write those electron configurations, which is called the noble gas notation. Now, from Mr. Hall's video, Hopefully you caught that the noble gases are group 18 and those have full electron shells. So all of these electron configurations in group 18 end in a P6 for their electron configuration. And that makes elements particularly stable. Elements want to have a full shell and when they have a full shell, they are energetically very stable and that makes those elements pretty unreactive. So when we talk about them, these elements here, they don't lose or gain electrons at all. They have all the electrons they want, so they don't really do much of anything. And so their electron configurations stay pretty consistent, where most of these elements will gain or lose um, electrons, and their electron configurations change a lot. So what I'd like us to do is write the electron configuration for neon. Okay, so neon's here. And its electron configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. All right. And then I'd like you to write the electron configuration for magnesium, which is just two elements around the corner. So give that a try. Magnesium's electron configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2. So now you say to yourself, self, these electron configurations look pretty much almost identical, and I would totally agree with you. They are almost the same, except for this 3s2 part. So what I can do is I can write magnesium's electron configuration as neon in brackets. And then when I write neon in brackets, what it means is that my magnesium has an electron configuration identical to neon 
except for the 3s2. So it's saying these brackets represent this part of the electron configuration. Now, when you write a shorthand, you can only ever use the noble gases. So you can only ever use neon, argon, helium, krypton, xenon, radon, or oganesson. Okay? You cannot use any other elements because their electron configurations change. But these have consistent electron configurations. All right. So we are going to rewrite manganese and yttrium in noble gas notation. So here is how I suggest doing that. If we're going to take a look at manganese, we're going to find manganese and then you want to back the truck up on your periodic table until you hit a noble gas. So don't go forward in atomic number, go backwards in atomic number until you hit a noble gas. And our noble gas that we hit is argon. So my noble gas configuration is going to start with argon in brackets. And that means that my electron configuration for manganese is identical to argon for part of it, which is true. Then what you want to do is just write down the parts that are different. And that's where knowing the trick of your periodic table is super important. Because if I know that this is the 4s, I just have to write down 4s2 and then 3d10. Okay. Let's do this for yttrium now. So what I want you to do is find y on your periodic table and then pause the video and see if you can write this in noble gas configuration. Okay. Yttrium. We find it. We back up in atomic number until we hit a noble gas, and that is going to be krypton. So I'm going to put KR in brackets, and then move from KR through the 5S shell. So I'm going through the 5S2, and then 4D1. So what it really shows us is kind of the most important electrons in that particular thing. All right, I'm going to give you one more that we haven't done so far, and I would like you to do, um, let's do silicon. It's not a very big one, but it doesn't mean we can't write it in noble gas notation. So take a second, pause your video, and then give, noble gas a or give the noble gas notation a try for silicon. Okay, find silicon on the periodic table here. Then back up in atomic number to your nearest noble gas. That is going to be neon. So I'm going to put neon in brackets. And then to get to silicon, I'm going to go through the 3s shell. So I'm going to write 3s2 and then 3p12. Because I'm two boxes into the 3p shell. Okay. Now, in the off chance that you get a noble gas and you need to write the noble gas configuration for it, you have to back up to the previous noble gas. So in the case of, let's say, argon, if I want to write argon's abbreviated version of its electron configuration, I'm going to go back up to neon and I'll have neon there and then I'll go 3s2, 3p six. Okay. So this AR in brackets is not an acceptable electron configuration for argon. You need to actually use the noble gas before it. That does mean that helium cannot be abbreviated and it's honestly so teeny tiny that you don't really have to worry about it anyways. All right. So this is going to save you a lot of time, especially when you get to some of these big mamas down here where they start to get bigger electron configurations. Because we aren't including anything in the F block, you are only going to be responsible for electron configurations through the fifth period. So if you find yourself continuing to struggle, please, please, please come to a Google Meet and get things cleared up. Otherwise, take the quick check, see how things go. Do a little bit more practice when we give you practice on day four. And then if you feel ready for the understanding check, you take it and you crush it. All right. Good luck.